So let me explain this thing about um, want for nothing. Uh, there shouldn't be anything in your life that is so important to you that you won't let it go. If it's difficult, if you try to force it to happen, let it go. If you feel like you're going to jump off a bridge, let, let that person go. Whether it's money or whatever, it's not that important. I was watching this show last night called The Inventor. It's called Out for Blood in Silicon Valley. And it's about this woman named Elizabeth uh, Holmes. Anybody ever heard of that? Yes. Oh, you guys heard of that. For those who haven't heard, Elizabeth Hol uh, Holmes was, is a woman who supposedly have invented, uh, what's it called? Yeah, blood testing. You know how normal when they want to take blood away from you? They put a needle in your arm, right? Well, she said that she invented this thing where you just take a little prick from your hand and take the blood away. And so she was going around like she was Steve Jobs or somebody, right? On all these networks and talking about how wonderful that is. I created this great idea and everybody was worshiping her for that, especially since she was a woman, too. They're like, wow, she's better than Steve. <laughs> and she was on all these networks. And then uh, um, and so many different companies were investing in it, in this thing. They put a lot of money into it. Walgreens and other companies allowed her to come in there. They built these uh, help stores and stuff like that where you can just go and just have a, a little prick on your hand to draw blood. And this woman was making buku money. She and another guy. And it was all over the place. And the, and the, uh, uh, the uh, big companies or the big investors saw that they were going to make a lot of money. So they believed her. And then she, they pulled in millions of dollars into this woman project, right? And uh, they said that up in this report said in Silicon, Silicon Valley, the business that she owned was so private, it was like, you could hardly get in there to visit. The employees, they had trained the employees not to even trust one another uh, to talk about the business or anything. And so time went by, and some of the customers started complaining that this thing isn't working because she would do to have the blood test done, but didn't have anyone to test the blood or something, or the blood test thing wasn't working. So a lot of people were getting sick because she would say they had one thing when they didn't really have it, or you don't have anything when you really have some type of disease. And so a lot of people start complaining about that. And as they start to complain, some of the employees started to question this woman and criticize that these, this lab test is not working. And so once they start looking into it, they later found out that this woman was a total lie, that she stole lies about it, right? And so the guy would ask, well, why did so many people trust this woman? Why did they get so into it? And the guy explained that uh, it's like rolling the dice. If you say, uh, uh, what would the dice end up on, a five or a two or something like that? You say five. In your mind, you're hoping for a five, right? And then they said, no, it's a two. It rolled, rolled up on a two. In your mind, Satan is saying, let's do it one more time. Let's throw the dice again. And let's say you throw the dice, you say, two. And then it end up on a five. You know, you keep losing. What happened is those investors wanted the money so bad that they didn't even check it out to see if it was real or not. They wanted the money, and Satan kept telling them, this is going to work. It will work. And likewise, for the woman, she would get away with lying. And Satan told her, as you know, more lies, you'll be fine. These people love it. So everybody being stroked by Satan, and turned out everybody lost. Now the woman is hated. The business is going out of business. The people are broke. And so the point is, the investors wanted the money so badly, and the woman wanted the fame. Now they're saying the woman is very insecure. She has problems. But they didn't see that. They didn't care about that when they wanted that money so badly. So the theme is don't want so much money that you're willing to do anything for money. Don't want friendship that you're willing to do anything for a friend. And to the ladies, don't want a husband so bad that you would do anything for a man. 
and to the men don't want a woman so much that you're willing to do it because in the end it's going to turn out wrong anyway. And they feed these ideas to you to make you think you want it more than you really want it. And you're not paying attention to his suggestions to you. You think that they're your own. If I take one more chance, if I, or like I'm sure with you guys, if I treat her, if I stay home, she'll be fine. She's not going to be fine. She got to work on the issues to be fine, to overcome. You got to live in reality, otherwise you're going to get screwed. You really are. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I can't hear you. Yeah. yeah. It, has this ever happened? I remember one time I had wanted uh, to enhance bonds, so I wanted to make some money to bring, you know, to do some stuff for the organization. And I invested in a company, and, and I realized now, especially after seeing that, but I had already realized, I wanted to make money for the organization so badly, I didn't even question the company. Come to find out the company fell through when they had that crash, so I lost. But in all honesty, I felt no pain about the loss because I realized that I didn't do any research. I wanted it so bad, I didn't even. Satan told me it's fine. The guy presented the project so well that I didn't even give it a second thought. And likewise, I noticed that with a lot of us, when we were that old way of a Christian, we really wanted to be a Christian because the parents said do it, the preacher said do it, and the preacher said, all I have to do is preach the Bible to you, learn the scriptures, quote them back, and you'll be fine, right? And so we got into the thing of read the Bible, quote the scriptures. Even though life didn't change, we just wanted it so badly to be Christian, we don't question the preacher. Well, if the Bible way is the right way, why am I not changing? If I say I believe in God, why do I still have fear and doubt and worry? Why am I so needy? I need somebody or I need this or that. You don't even question it. You've got to start questioning it. Don't let anything be that important that you can't let it go. It will destroy you. And so always question things. Don't just take anyone at their word. If you don't see it for yourself, it's not yours. Don't let the investors come by and, and just give you all this information about how much money you're going to make and how fast you're going to make it. Now you're thinking about the money. And you give them your money, and then you end up losing out. you got to be in the present so you can see what's going on. That makes sense? This woman was a total liar, and she's still lying. She's like, oh, I got another plan. <laughs> I know how to make it better. It never worked in the beginning. It never worked. It's the same thing with this collusion against the president. It was just all lies. It's like they made up something that didn't even happen. And then they put it out there, and some people believed it. They just believed it because the people were excited and emotional, and they said it, so you fell for the emotion. This world is of Satan, and his children are very clever at how they present stuff. They really are. They've been educated, but it's not a good education, but they know how to deceive you. They're a great deceiver. So don't let anything, anybody, anywhere, anyhow be so important. If you feel like you've got to have it, let it go. And you'll be grateful later. You really will. And, and God will take care of you. That makes sense? And I'm sure if you examine your life, you've been, you know, you've allowed yourself to, that to happen to you. Yes, sir, right here. And then I'll go around the room. Yes, sir. Um, I, I heard a, an attorney uh, was discussing laws in America. And he said that fraud, all the laws around fraud, mail fraud, bank fraud, uh, social uh, stock exchange, all those frauds, he says are, it was a relatively new law. It doesn't come from common law. It's a relatively new law that they invented to protect greedy people. Because all these people, that they, they, the guy that commits fraud on you or me, he commits it and he, he, he taps into my greed, my defective character. And that fraud is really, it, it actually, uh, it's protecting the greed. Yeah, the that greed, makes sense. The huh? greedy instinct. And he said, it's a bad law. It's a bad, if you fall for it, it's your fault because you're greedy. Yeah. Bernie, that guy Bernie, whatever his name was, Madoff. Bernie Madoff, he tapped it, 25%. It defies common sense. The greed takes over and defies common sense. You cannot make 15 to 20% on your money. It's not possible mathematically. Right. It just sounds good because it's so important to you. Right. This is where I want you to know that Satan get involved in everything. 
really, he gets involved in everything you do. You could think about, I want a glass of water. And then he, he's going to make you think, do you want it from the bottle or from the sink? <laughs> <laughs> do you want hot water or cold water? Room temperature or cold? Do you want sparkling water or regular water? He, he gets involved in that too. And then you end up drinking the wrong water. <laughs> That's how you want water. Just get some water. <laughs> because, but watch. I want, you're supposed to be the watchman at the gate. Just waiting for Christ. Just watch, and he'll lead your way. He'll show you way. you got to, you got to become aware. you got to watch. Live in the present and watch. Know yourself, and you'll see what's controlling you, and you'll overcome it. You'll see that you're not in control, and you will overcome it. And not you, but God will take that spirit away from you. And he'll wake you up. It's so amazing. But it's all kind of stuff happening because when you're in that fallen state, you love lies. Right here. Um, what about like at, um, at work? I start off as a welding apprentice. I start off under someone. Yes. But now I'm moving my way up. And I really like the job. And I'm focused and can't stop thinking about it um, as far as moving up. Right. Is that bad? That, that I'm Don't think of moving up. Just be grateful that you have a job. Mm -hmm. Do your best as though it's your own company. And you would naturally, it would, whatever it meant to be will happen and it would be mind-blowing. It would be better than anything you can imagine. Just naturally go there and show your appreciation to the boss and put your best into it. But don't want it, it. I'm sorry? But don't want it. So, right, don't, don't, you know, like don't have in your mind, this is everything to you. Oh. I got to have this. You know, no. I got to move up. It's not about that. Be grateful you have a job. I had a janitorial service. I was as grateful for that as I was being a computer operator. Yeah. And as grateful for that as I am about Bond, I have the same attitude. I can't believe I'm doing this. When I had a job, I couldn't believe God gave me a job. And so I, I promised the person I'd be there on time. I do, I do the job for this amount of money. I kept my word, and one thing leads to another. I'm telling you, when you are right and you do right, nothing on earth can stop you. But don't have a plan of moving up. Yeah. And you may, God may take you another way. He may have you start your own thing. You just don't know. So don't let Satan tell you, oh, because what's going to happen if you don't move up in your time, then you're going to start hating the job. You're going to blame the boss like, like the boss promised you that he's going to move you up or something, right? you start complaining because Satan will tell you, look at that old boss. Here you are here every day. You work very hard. Louise is never here. They moved her up over you. Yeah. And I you'll believe that. Like, that. Yeah. I have thought like that before. So what? I have thought like that before where I'm like, hey, I, I can do better than this guy. Why is See he getting there? rid? Yeah. yeah. So I, I agree with that. Yeah. So Satan get involved in everything. And every thought is a lie. Just know that. So when he does talk to you like that, you don't know why this person is moving up. Wish them well. You still do what you're supposed to do with a good attitude. It's so amazing, man. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Thanks. Good question, too. You got to let go. We are all idiots. Any, any idiots in the room? Yeah. We're idiots. <laughs>